What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I hope you are having a fantastic day. If you're new to the channel, my name is Parker Nierenstein, and this is Vehicle Virgins. If you end up finding this video informative, smash that subscribe button for me and give it a big thumbs up. From auto shows to spy shots to press junkets, manufacturers have made it clear that 2019 is going to be an incredibly exciting year for cars and SUVs. As the automotive industry becomes more and more competitive, that means that each individual manufacturer has to produce the absolute best product that they can in order to stay alive. And that is a very good thing for consumers and people interested in buying a car in 2019. So what do we have to look forward to? Well, let's start with an awesome offering from Ford. Hype is steadily building over the 2019 Ford GT500. Unlike the GT350, the 500 is going to be more focused on straight line speed instead of all out track performance. However, in a world of 840 horsepower Dodge Demons, as well as Tesla Model S P100Ds, Ford is gonna have to do something very creative with the GT500 in order to make it stand out from the pack. Ford has confirmed that the new GT500 will be powered by a 5.2 liter supercharged V8. Power will likely be over 700 horsepower and a top speed in excess of 200 miles per hour. The new 10 speed automatic transmission will be fitted in the GT500 for quicker shift times. But the exciting part is that spy photos have shown the presence of a six speed manual transmission in GT500 test mules. That is going to be the main differentiating factor and an extremely appealing reason to buy a GT500 over its competitors. Because remember, the Dodge Demon is only offered in an automatic and well, the Tesla Model S P100D obviously does not come with a manual transmission. And given the way the world is moving with their automatics and hybrid powertrains, this might be the last of its kind. A truly brutal rear wheel drive, 700 plus horsepower manual V8 Ford. Next up may be the craziest Lamborghini ever made. The 2020 Lamborghini Aventador SVJ. This is going to be the final edition limited version of the Aventador. We thought the SV was going to be that, and then all of a sudden Lamborghini dropped the Aventador S. Well, this is a limited version of the Aventador S with some features that I think you'll quite enjoy. The J in SVJ stands for Jota. That name was originally used in 1970 with the Lamborghini Miura. The Miura Jota weighed 800 pounds less than the standard Miura, had some engine upgrades as well as revised aerodynamics. As you can imagine, Lamborghini will be employing similar techniques to the SVJ Aventador. The SVJ is going to be powered by that naturally aspirated six and a half liter V12, making upwards of 800 horsepower. The SVJ will employ the all wheel steering system developed for the Aventador S to make it nimble at low speeds and more stable at high speeds. It's also likely to feature some of the active aero elements, the ALA that's present on the Performante. It also has a very similar exhaust style to the Performante as well. You'll notice that wing in the back is absolutely massive, kind of similar to that on the Lamborghini Veneno. One thing's for sure, Lamborghini is going to have to make the SVJ faster around the Nürburgring than the Performante. If they have their big, expensive, limited V12 supercar, this is likely going to be significantly more limited than the SV, where they only made 600 units, if they made that slower than the cheaper Performante, it wouldn't look good for the brand. So that means a Nürburgring lap time of under six minutes and 52 seconds. The real question is, will it be faster than the 647 made by the Porsche GT2 RS? 2019 is the year of the luxury SUV with offerings from Bentley and then Maserati and now Lamborghini. Rolls-Royce wants to take a stab at creating the ultimate luxurious SUV. They have dubbed it the Cullinan, and we will see it in 2019. And judging by Rolls-Royce's social media videos on the Cullinan, whereby it's drifting in the snow, off-roading all over the world, it will be the most capable Rolls-Royce ever made. Under its massive hood is a 6.6 .6 liter twin turbocharged V12 from the Phantom 
making 563 horsepower and 660 pound-feet of torque. You'll notice the design really looks like a lifted up Phantom, although it's likely to come in at a slightly lower price point. There's not a lot of information out about the Cullen other than some spy shots in camo. However, it is safe to say that Rolls-Royce is doing everything in their power to make sure that the Cullinan is better than the Bentley Bentayga in every measurable way. BMW has several exciting new cars coming in 2019, one of which is the replacement to the F80 BMW M3. It's going to be dubbed the G80 and will feature many of the Trixie elements the M5 has, as well as some bits from the M4 GTS mixed in. It's likely the variable all-wheel drive system from the M5 won't be standard on the M3 due to weight issues, but there have been talks about having that all-wheel drive system as an option where you can have all-wheel drive off the launch for better acceleration, then you can decouple the front drivetrain to make it 100% rear-wheel drive. That will likely be a expensive option for the M3. It is also likely that the M3 is going to feature water injection like that in the M4 GTS to control intake air temperatures. Pretty cool. Power likely to be around 500. It's going to use the same 3-liter twin-turbocharged V6. It's got a lot of room left in it for future variants, so don't worry, 500 horsepower horsepower is not going to be the cap for the new M3. Like the M5, they are ditching the double clutch transmission for an eight speed automatic. And thankfully the M3 will come standard with a six speed manual transmission. That's what I'm talking about. On the SUV side, BMW plans to bring the X7 to production in 2019. It will be the largest, most luxurious SUV BMW has ever made and a very important X model for the brand. The X7 will feature three rows of seating and the top of the line model, the non-M, will likely receive the 4.4 liter twin turbocharged V8 engine and it's going to cost you over $100,000. Will it be worth it? Only time will tell. If it looks anything like the X7 concept they revealed, it will be a smash hit. Mercedes has just dropped their latest concept, the Vision Mercedes Maybach Ultimate Luxury SUV. Yes, that is legitimately what it is called. Based on the next generation GLS platform, Mercedes takes an opulent, luxurious approach to SUVs that they normally make look very, very aggressive. With its 24-inch turbine wheels, massive front grille, and chrome accents, it is a sight for sore eyes. It even features a split sunroof. No, not one and two like this, but split down the middle, as well as split rear window. Very unique, seen in older automobiles, but hasn't been used in a long time, minus the Rolls-Royce swept tail. On the inside, it's more opulent than you could possibly imagine. A mix of S-Class, private jet, and yacht influences come together in one of the most stunning interiors I have ever seen. Now, this is just a concept, but some of these design elements will eventually trickle down into the future luxurious Mercedes SUV lineup when they do try to compete directly with the Bentley Bentayga, the Urus, as well as the Cullinan. Obviously, Audi is not going to let Mercedes and BMW steal all the thunder with luxurious SUVs as they are bringing the all-new Audi Q8 in 2019. Now, not much is known about the Q8. We did have the Q8 concept reveal absolutely breathtaking vehicle. We do know it's going to be based on the Q7 as well as Lamborghini Urus platform. Audi just teased pictures of the side profile of the Q8 and it is really cool looking. There are some spy shots as well that reveal it actually looks very similar to the Q8 concept. That is an exciting thought that auto manufacturers are actually bringing these concept cars to reality without taming them down, making them so safe so they know they can appeal to the mass market that they lose all of that special flair that the concept itself had. We do know that it also is going to have a hybrid powertrain option at the top of the line developed in conjunction with Porsche, which will feature an all electric range of 31 miles just on electricity. The brand new G63 AMG is a hugely important car for Mercedes. It's got a radically different exterior design than the previous model, as well as finally including an interior that's worthy of the six-figure price tag that the G-Wagon holds. In fact, this is the first complete redesign since the car was introduced in 1979. 
The front and rear bumpers are more rounded, diverting a bit from the boxy military vibe that the G-Wagon had prior, although it still looks distinctively G-Wagon. Under the large hood of the G63 lies a four liter twin turbocharged V8 that makes 577 horsepower and 627 pound feet of torque. The most important part about the new G-Wagon is that they have focused on daily drivability for road use, because let's be honest, while the G-Wagon is capable off-road, most of their owners that are fortunate enough to be able to buy one are more likely to take it to the mall or just take it to the grocery store than they are to actually go off-road. The problem with that is, is that the G-Wagon wasn't all that comfortable to drive. It rides extraordinarily rough because it's so capable on the off-road, there were some limitations on road, but now they have developed a completely new independent front suspension as well as retuned rear suspension so that it rides much softer for road use. That is going to be a huge point of success for Mercedes with the new G63. Lamborghini has jumped into the SUV market with the introduction of the Urus. Set to launch in 2019, it'll set you back $200,000, but that isn't stopping anyone from trying to get their hands on it. It's got a bi-turbo V8 that makes 650 horsepower and produces a gorgeous exhaust note for an SUV. I heard it in person in Geneva and, well, they knocked it out of the park with the sound. And due to the fact that it's also an SUV, which means it's practical, these are flying off the shelves because, well, they're not a two-door, impractical, low-slung Lamborghini with no storage space. The Lamborghini CEO explained that 70% of Urus buyers are actually new to the Lamborghini brand. And you'd imagine, all right, the vehicle costs $200,000. Maybe there's more buyers because it's a bit of an entry-level car, right? The Huracan, the non-rear-wheel drive one, starts at a bit above that, closer to 240. Then we've got the Performante. Then, of course, the Aventador S, way, way above that. But this is actually not the case whatsoever. According to Manhattan Motor Cars, the average Urus buyer actually actually has a lot more money than somebody buying an Aventador or a Huracan. That's because there are all these people scattered around the country in places where owning an Aventador is completely impractical, whether it be weather restrictions or the roads surrounding. But there are plenty of people with money who now finally can get into the Lamborghini brand with the Urus. So it's definitely no surprise that Lamborghini plans out of its 8,000 car production in 2019 for 50% of it to be taken up by the Urus. The Urus has a gorgeous interior that's distinctly Lamborghini. It even has six different driving modes, actually seven if you include Ego mode, three of which are dedicated to the off-road. Lastly is the C8 generation Chevy Corvette. With the introduction of the 2019 Chevy ZR1, the fastest Corvette ever made, it is now time to move on to the C8 generation. Its debut is likely to be January 2019 at the Detroit Auto Show. Can't think of a better place than there to reveal the new car. Interestingly, Chevy plans on producing the C8 and the C7 simultaneously. The C8 is going to be mid-engine. That is a massive difference for the C8 versus the C7. The C8 might feature a new engine dubbed the LT7. That's a 5.5 liter twin turbo V8, not supercharged. Another radical difference from the C7. It's also likely to have active aerodynamics as well as a front lift for more practicality. So there you guys have it, the top 10 cars and SUVs coming in 2019, all the way from Rolls-Royce Cullinans to new C8 Corvettes. If you found this video informative and you're excited about one of the vehicles that's coming out, let me know which one you are most stoked about. Leave a like on this video, subscribe if you found it helpful. As always, I look forward to seeing you next video.